In this video, we're going to look at how to protect the VMware Unified Access Gateway for two-factor authentication with Duo. Now, as per the Duo information on the website, it is possible to protect the Unified Access Gateway or UAG with Duo by using the generic radius documentation. But there is a caveat there in that from a duo standpoint, we have not officially tested or um, made sure that the integration works. So because of that, it's not officially supported by duo. So if you do decide to configure this, you know, if there is any issues that you do encounter, then from a duo standpoint, if you have duo care, then it's probably not going to be supported. However, with that said, it is possible, as we said, with the generic radius. And that's the purpose of this video, to set this up, test it, and make sure that we get the right configuration in place so that we don't encounter any issues. So we currently have a Unified Access Gateway Appliance version 2.2.07 in my lab environment, and this is what we're going to use today to test. It's currently set up with the Edge service, so I've got the connection server configured uh, between the UAG and we've currently just configured uh, some defaults so that we can actually form that connection to um, to the environment. As you can see, authentication settings are not yet configured. Everything's disabled. And in terms of options, we can see that the one that we're going to be looking at today is using RADIUS. There is also certificate authentication, the secure ID, uh, secure ID with RSA and RSA's adaptive authentication. So the one that we're focusing on today is going to be the second one, RADIUS. So if we just go back to this and we open the RADIUS documentation, this is the generic uh, duo documentation for configuring or protecting radius applications. So feel free to uh, navigate to this documentation and have a read of this. I will include it in the video description as well, um, but it's very straightforward. So I'm not going to go through this step by step. Uh, but what I will say is that in order to do this, we also need to install the Duo Authentication Proxy as well, which is a lightweight application that will sit within your environment and have the ability to communicate with um, the UAG and also your identity provider. Uh, so in our demonstration, we're going to be using Active Directory as our identity provider. So in a nutshell, the steps are to install the authentication proxy, make sure that's configured correctly, configure the radius configuration on the UAG and make sure that aligns with the authentication proxy and then test. So within my demo environment, I've got the UAG that I've just showed you already installed. I also have the authentication proxy already installed as well. However, the configuration that we're going to do today is not currently in place. So we will go through that configuration so that you can see what that looks like. So given that we've already got the authentication proxy installed, what we'll do is we'll start off on the Duo admin panel. So first and foremost, we'll log in. And once we're logged in, we need to go to Applications. And then we want to select Protect an Application. And then what we're going to do here is type in Radius. And you can see there's a few supported integrations for 2FA already, but the one that we're looking for is the generic uh, integration. So this is a bottom one here, Radius 2FA. And if you click documentation, if you click on that link there, that's going to take you to 
uh, the link that we've just opened. So we'll just click protect. Now, as always, for those that have watched previous duo videos of mine, the important details that we're going to need uh, and copied across to the authentication proxy in this case is the integration key, secret key and API host name. But before we do that, we'll just scroll down and as I always recommend for every application, please do create a, a separate application policy. Um, so what we what we have here is we've got the ability to create a, a group policy, application policy or global policy. So the global policy is default and uh, that will be applied if there isn't any above the global policy. In our case, we're just going to create an application policy. So we'll create a new one and we'll call this UAG demo. And what we'll do is make sure that unenrolled users are required to enroll. Yeah, it's all enforced 2FA, that's fine. Um, so we'll just create a default policy like that. We'll leave most of the settings as they are there. And as you can see now, we've got a an application policy. So we'll just scroll down and we also want to make sure that we name this application appropriately, especially if we've got multiple generic uh, radius applications. So I'm gonna call this one demo UAG app. Oh. And in my case for this demonstration, I am going to make sure that username normalization is on because we're going to be um, making sure that uh, whether it's a, a username that's entering uh, the domain and then the username um, or, a, or the email address, we want to make sure that that, um, that user is matched in uh, within Duo as well. Uh, based on the username so that's that done and we'll leave the rest of the settings as they are and we'll just click save on that all right so once you've configured the application we're going to need as i said the integration key secret key and api host name and those details will be used within our authentication proxy so this is my authentication proxy and I've already pre-populated the I key, S key and API hostname. As you can see here, I have the S key encrypted. You can also do the same within your environment. Just search the Duo documentation on how to encrypt your passwords and, and secrets within the authentication proxy as well. But what we're looking at here is essentially we've, we've got a radius server field here radius server auto 6 because i've got other radius server server autos configured as well it's going to automatically send push notifications to users that are authenticating uh, to the application using duo's two-factor authentication so we tie in the integration key the secret key and api host name that we got from our application on the duo admin panel and then our radius IP addresses are going to be the connection server or the UAG itself or both. So what I've done here is I've actually got the UAG uh, configured as well for two-factor authentication and I have the connection server configured as well so I've got both of those IP addresses there and when you've got both of the IP addresses there if you are doing the same then you do need to ensure that the radius secret is also uh, that's also associated with each one of those is is covered and um, matching on uh, the authentication proxy as well we then have the client so what we're doing here is we're looking we're going to look up those primary authentication credentials via our active directory so our ad underscore client in this case and we're using port 1812 for, for radius so if i just scroll up here our ad client is here and then i've got my service account username and password and my search dn so this is essentially where the 
users are going to be found when authenticating to uh, that particular application. So once you've downloaded the authentication proxy and you've configured it correctly with your AD client as well as the Radius server auto, we're pretty much good on the authentication proxy side. So what I would do then is I would validate the configuration just by pressing the validate button. And this is pretty much good to go ignore this part here because I've just got some more test configuration that we're doing. Um, so once we're good with that, we can actually save that configuration. If you're happy with that, make sure you do save it there at the bottom and then we can start the service. And if there's anything wrong, it's not going to let you start the service. It'll just throw up an error. So we'll just give this a second to start. And as you can see there, that, that authentication proxy is now started. We can now move along to configure the unified application gateway in our case for this demonstration. So now we can actually move on to configuring the unified access gateway appliance. So we first want to start off with authentication settings. So access your UAG and head over to authentication settings. And then we need to find radius, which is here. We can see that this is already enabled on mine. Uh, because I have some other test config that I was using. But in a new deployment, you would need to enable this enable radius button here. For authentication type, we're going to select PAP for our particular deployment. And then the secret is going to be the secret that you configured on the authentication proxy. That needs to match on the UAG as well. So mine was UAG demo, number of authentication attempts permitted. Uh, I'm gonna leave this at three, I configured three here so that if a user enters incorrect credentials three times, it's basically gonna tell them that um, they've exceeded uh, or, or hit that limit now and they'll have to start again. Number of attempts to radius uh, server will leave as three. Server timeout will leave as one minute or 60 seconds. And then our host name or our IP address for our radius server is actually going to now point to the duo authentication proxy. So in my case, it's going to be 151.7.199. And then authentication port will be using our standard radius. 1812. We do have some more information here that we can populate, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're not going to modify any of these. So once we're done there, we'll just click save. And now what we want to do is head over to edge service settings, horizon settings. And then what we want to do is we want to expand more. We're looking for authentication method or auth method. So we wanna select that and change this to radius. So with the auth method radius enabled now, we get a few more settings down here. And we can see here that we have the ability to match Windows username. So essentially what this is saying is with the uh, username that we use for radius, it's going to apply also to uh, when we come to use the username to validate our credentials with the Active Directory for the primary authentication. So we'll leave that uh, enabled now because it'll just make the process uh, a lot easier. And there's also another set in here, Enable Windows SSO. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to have a kind of one-time authentication experience whereby we enter the username and password once and then we can um, essentially log in we don't have to go through another uh, round of authentication once we've validated uh, two-factor authentication so we'll just click save on that and we'll get our test machine up now and what we'll do is we'll connect and yeah we'll stick with this user demo uh, in, in the de demo domain, demo user free, and we'll give it the password. And what it's gonna do first is we're going to 
uh, check that those credentials are correct and then we're going to receive a two-factor authentication push which I've just got to my Apple Watch so I'll approve that and then once I've approved that you can see I've got straight in there and what it's done is it's just validated those primary credentials with Active Directory and given us access and we're able to do that with the even with the domain specified so if i just click here even with the domain specified because in our dual admin panel if we just go to our applications and then we go to our application for this particular demo we just scroll down we can see that for what we did is we changed user normalization to make sure that that was set to simple so that if there is any uh, prefix or suffixes add, added to a username it's basically going to strip them down and consider the username um, for for authentication and that's what allows us to get through that uh, seamless authentication process when using duo and lastly if we just go to reports there you can see there that we have uh, for this particular one here we've got an authentication here more recent one that we've just done um, as well and we can see that's been granted we can see the application as well and time date etc and that's simply how you can configure duo two-factor authentication for the VMware unified access gateway appliance